Okay, that means we're recording. Should mean we're recording. Okay. <clears throat> so last week we talked a little bit about, was it selection sort? Right, selection sort is the sort where you're given the ability to find the largest element of the list, and then we use that function to just repeatedly find the largest element of the list and put it at the back, right? And find the next largest element and put it at the back. Today we're, today we're going to discuss two other types of sorting, bubble and insertion, insertion sort, and we're going to figure out how they work by restricting ourselves to one operation on lists, and then seeing if we can use that operation to actually sort something. So here's your first question of today. Suppose the only operation we could perform on lists was swapping adjacent cells, right? So for selection sort, we were allowed to swap arbitrary cells. So now imagine all we could do, uh, by adjacent, I mean they have to be beside one another. So we can switch cells 3 and 4, but we cannot switch cells 7 and 11. Right, so if we could only swap adjacent cells, could we sort a list? How? <laughs> Not so confident now, yeah. Uh, yes? Exactly. Okay, so have you learned bubble sorts? Or? Oh, you just figured that out. Good on you. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk through the list looking at pairs of elements. And suppose we want to sort in ascending order, uh, that is smallest to greatest. So we look at the zero in the one cell, and then we swap to make the larger item go right. right? And we're call we call this procedure bubbling. Right? So you look at two adjacent elements, and you let the larger one bubble to the top. Right? So this is what bubbles do. They move from the, from the bottom of a liquid to the top of the liquid. So, um, what's the stopping? Well, okay, so I'll just show you this, right? So, here's how one pass of bubble sort looks like. And again, I ripped off this, um, I just downloaded this picture from online because I was too lazy to create it. So, you have a list, it has two, four, six, eight, nine elements. And what we're going to do is we're just going to make passes or scans through this list. So we're going to look at the elements 54 and 26, they're the adjacent elements 0 and 1, and we uh, bubble 54 up, right? So we, we do make a swap there, right? That's how 54, 26 becomes 26, 54. Now we look at the first and second position, and we don't bubble because 93 is already at the top. Then we move to the next one, and we see that 93 and 17 need to be compared, and we do swap because 93 needs to bubble. We do it again, 93 bubbles, 93 bubbles, 93 bubbles, 93 bubbles, 93 bubbles, 93 is at the top. Okay. So we made one pass, and after one pass, we have one position that's sorted at the end of the list. If we make another pass, we should have two elements at least sorted at the end of the list. So I'm going to have to make multiple passes over this list until the list is sorted. Okay, so given that we're now going to write the algorithm to do this, what is our stopping condition, right? So it's not going to be hard to run, to run the list and do these swaps, right? We just have to write one for loop to do that and to make the comparison. But we're going to have to do that scanning in a loop, a while loop, and we're going to need a condition for that while loop to run. So at what point should we stop trying to bubble lists, this list? Exactly. So suppose we make a pass through the list and nothing gets swapped. The only way for that to happen is if the list is sorted. Okay, so we're going to write a loop that will repeat while the last swap, uh, while the last pass had a swap. And then while that's true, we're going to do the bubble. So you all have this picture in your mind? Because now we're going to go implement it. All right, so let's implement bubble. And today is Monday, which sucks. But uh, we're approaching the end of term quite rapidly. I think we only have two more weeks left here. <laughs> did I guys? Did I just frighten you guys? You just realized the exam's like three weeks away. Oh, I can feel you guys stressing. That made me happy, actually. <laughs> okay, so let's write bubble sort. 
we need to take a list and let's just make it easy on ourselves. Let's just restrict ourselves to integers today. And remember, we're doing all of this in place because it'd be a bad idea to duplicate the data structure. I'm just going to return none so we remember that this is an in-place algorithm. Um, and we're going to sort in ascending order using the bubble sort technique. Uh, I don't want to write these, but let's just do a couple. If we sort the empty list, we should get, oh, right. I have to store this, then I have to print this, and if I print this, I should get empty. Okay. If I get one, a singleton list, that should return the singleton list, and let's just pick one more. Uh, one. 3, minus 2, minus 5, 1, 7, and that should sort to what? Uh, minus 5, minus 2, 1, 1, 3, 7. Yeah? Okay. Okay, so while, and I'm just going to just throw in a 1 and just write, uh, while list is not sorted, Right, that is i.e. last sweep or last scan had no swap. Okay, I'll fix that condition when we get to it. So what, what do we have to do now? Now we have to perform one bubble or one scan while bubbling. Okay, so that means I'm going to have to what? I'm going to have to look at every pair. So maybe I'm going to do it this way. Um, for... Uh, k in range 1 through the length of the list. Um, so I, I'm going to always compare k minus 1 and k. We could either do k minus 1 and k or k and k plus 1. You pick, but that's why I'm starting from 1, because I'm going to compare k minus 1 with k. So if x is at k minus 1 is larger than x is at k, what should I do? Louder. Yeah, you, you had the right answer. You, <laughs> yes, you. Sw yeah, switch or swap, right? So if, um, if the position here uh, is, is like this, then we have to bubble up, right? So that means we have to perform a uh, swap. So let me check this for a moment. I don't actually know if I need to. X, Y is 1, 2. Oh, great. I don't actually have to put them into tuple. Um, so remember that we have this faster way of performing the swap. So we here we uh, swap positions. Nope, I just checked that. Uh, am I going to walk off the end of the list here? I don't think so. But am I going to check the last element of the list? No, I think this is messed up. I'm never going to check the last member of the list. So maybe I need to add one here. All right, I'm going to do it the other way. I'm gonna, the other way was ended up being better, but I don't need that. Okay, so I need to check plus one. No, I need to check this. If this is bigger than k plus one, then I should swap these positions. xk plus one with x. Okay. Does that make sense? Have I made a mistake? Yeah. No, because remember, ranges are exclusive on the right endpoint. Oh, wait, you are right. Okay, so nothing was going to save me from deducting one. Okay. So this is why I don't like working with indices, right? Because there's all these considerations that you have to make about walking up along the end of the list. Okay, so. Because I'm checking a position and the position after it, I have to stop one less than the end of the list, as you said. Okay, so now what? Okay, so now I have, I have to go and concern myself with, the, um, with this condition. So I, I want something like um, swap made, right? Which is going to be, uh, well, I want to say something like while swap made. Right, so that forces this to be true. Uh, so while a swap is made, list may be unsorted. Right? I was thinking about this last night. If, you, if the 
your last swap may in fact be, well, your last, there will be a last swap which will sort the list, right? So I can't say here if, if the last, if the, I want, like, I formally said something like this. If uh, while swap made list is not sorted, which is technically not true, right? The last swap may in fact sort the list. So I have to say while swap made list may not be sorted. Or like you will will only ever require maybe at most one more iteration to to check that it's sorted. But in any case, uh, perform one scan while bubbling. So I should say swap made is true here. Oh no no false. And then if this happens, then swap made gets true. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to grab something from here because I'm sick of typing things into the Python interpreter. Uh, okay, so I just made a list comprehension here, which is going to generate me a, a list of random integers of length 10. And then what I want to do is bubble sort this. And let's print it, and let's cross our fingers and hope that this works. For oh. That's something that I can handle. Uh, from random import random rand integer. Maybe I want to see it at some point. Is that correct? Hooray, that looks correct. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Great. Okay. Um, all right, let's try running the doc test then. Uh, P3 Monday. Import doc test. Doc test. Test mod. Lots of fails. Okay, so got nothing, got nothing, got nothing. Okay, yes, I did something wrong. I have to do this. I can't just pass it, uh, because, yeah, it's not worth, yeah. Thanks, guys. That's, I shouldn't do that. Oh. Yeah. Uh, learn from my mistakes. I hate doc strings. Unit tests are better. Okay, let's try again. Let's try again. Okay, so I'm going to get out of here, go in. Doc test, doc test. Hooray! Attempted nine. Why did it attempt nine? No, because you have like nine. Oh, okay, so if I put something like this here, would it fail? Probably. Oops. Yeah, okay, geez. Okay, so we, we learned something else. Each of these lines constitute a doc test, even though we really only care about this one. So be, care be careful about what you're doing here. I don't know. I think we're all learning that sort of maybe doc testing is maybe not as robust as we need it to be. Right. You're going to be doing unit testing. The only thing that's really nice about the doc testing is that um, you're showing users, you're giving users a few working examples of how to use the function. That's what I'd recommend. Um, so I had to write all of the, uh, for the assignment, I had to write all of the example code, like the example database that you're going to be reading in. So make sure to look at like the output because right, you can fix, I made sure to include a lot of the edge cases in the database, right? So if you study the output, you should be able to figure out what the edge cases should produce. Yeah. So what would happen if I made this false? Like, look at the condition on my while loop. It won't run. Thank you. Yes. So if I uh, put a false in here, so I needed to set it to true so I could at least enter the loop. So what would be more appropriate here actually would be a do while loop if I had one, but nothing is going to prevent me from like introducing. So I know this is kind of ugly. I tried to make it less ugly last night, but then I just gave up. Um, okay, so this is bubble sort. So what do you guys think of it? Do you think it's better or worse than the last one that we wrote? Equivalent, right? Hmm? Yeah, but I don't remember what <laughs> the last, last week's timings were. Okay, so let's just try to time a few of these. 
So we can at least compare it with the algorithm that we're going to write after this. However, I forgot how to time stuff. So let's see. It was time it, right? From time it, import, time it. OK. Um, So I have to say time it, I have to say lambda for reasons I talked about last week, and I maybe want to do this how many times? Five times? Uh, but I really would like it to work with different... Okay, we're going to do something more clever this week. Uh, testing. Right? Testing is going to be an empty function. What it's going to do is it's going to... Because I want a random list tested each time, right? So I'm going to say... Uh, n is equal, okay, I'm going to say uh, for uh, k in range 10. Let's say we're going to do 10 tests. The length of the list is going to be 10. Uh, maybe I should take this in like this. n will be an input. Uh, that's the length of the list. I'm going to time it. Uh, I'm just going to print this. None. Okay, so I want to say time it. I want to test lambda at testing at maybe length 10 lists, and I want to do this once. Okay, so this is going to test. Huh? Did I spell lambda wrong? Lam oh, yeah. Lamb, as in the animal. Da, as in the sound. Um, Did I actually, okay, bubble sort is there. Okay, so hopefully this won't fail. Okay, too, too small. We need to do lists that are bigger. Okay, bigger yet. That may have been a mistake. So my mom said after I was born. True story. Yeah. I'm not going to wait for 10. Okay, 20 seconds. Let's write that down. So, how big was the list? One, two, three, four. That's 10,000. So, 10,000 took us. Shh. How long? 17 seconds? 17 seconds. Uh, I just need to get the one that was below this. What was 1,000? Does anyone remember 1,000? I think maybe it was like, oh, oh God, what is happening? Sigh. Ah. <sighs> Where is it? Is it here? Oh, it's here. Oh my god. I am not having a fantastic Monday. Uh, okay. Zero point one seven. This is bad, right? So the length of the list went up by 10, and the timing went up by 100. Right, so you see how this is going to screw us? Right. So uh, one step in the length of the list corresponds to 10 steps in the timing. So this is already giving us a clue to how we're going to describe the runtime of this as being quadratic. Right, because a, like a 10 step forward in the list gives you a 100 fold increase in the timing. And now you're, now you're all sort of appreciating why we're computer scientists, because the question is going to be, well, this sucks. We, we can't wait around for lists to be sorted in this number of time, given how important sorting is to like all of our algorithms. Like, we can get this down to something. Well, the optimal runtime complexity for lists is this, n log n. You're not going to understand that until next year. Right, so OK, so for bubble, I should write that down. For bubble. We had these types of timings. This was the length of the list, and this was the time, just so we can remember. Okay, so 
We've done bubble. Let's do a different one now. If I have time left today, remind me to go over your assignment. <coughs> OK, so uh, insertion sort, we were limited to finding the largest element of a list and swapping it with the end. Bubble sort, we were restricted to only being able to interchange adjacent cells. Now I'm going to say the only operation we can do on the lists is to take an element and insert it into a list that's already been sorted. Right, so suppose I know how to take an element and insert it into a list that's already been sorted. Can I use that to sort a list? No guesses? No, now, you, now you've just re-implemented um, selection sort. Yeah. The only thing you have is the ability to put a, a, an element into a sorted list. No guesses. Yeah. OK, but give it okay, fine. Suppose I give you a list. Is, let's, let's, let's imagine slices of the list. If you make a slice of length 1, is that list sorted? Is a list of length 1 sorted? Yes. Yeah. It has one element. So you know how to insert a new element into that sorted list of 1, right? So I give you a list, you assume that the first one element of that list is sorted, and then you take the second element of the list and, ins and insert it into that set of one. Right? And then you have the first two elements of your list sorted. And then you take the third element of your list and you insert it into that sorted list. Now you have three elements sorted. Then you take the fourth element and you insert it into that list of the three sorted elements. Now you have a list of four elements that's sorted. So basically you just say, okay, we're going to sort our list from front to back. Assume, and at step k, we're going to have the first k elements of the list sorted. And, so, and then given, our uh, given the technique that we've been allowed to use, so if the first k elements of our list is sorted, we look at the k plus 1 element of the list and then just insert it into the sorted list. So this is basically just writing what I have said. And this is displaying it. So um, there's a lot of animations that show you how this works. They don't really tell you anything. They're very pretty to look at. I could show you. Um, there's actually some stuff on YouTube where people have like played sounds. Oh, yeah. So you can listen to the sorting algorithm. It's all kind of gimmicky. But in any case, wait, this is bubble sort. Oh, no, it's not. No, it's not. Um, OK, so this is exactly what I'm saying. So in the, in the first list, exactly one element is sorted. Right, so remember, after k iterations, the first k members of the list should be sorted. So iteration 1, first element is sorted. Iteration 2, we take the number 26 and we insert it into the list 54, which, which sort of sucks because now we have to like push elements down. Right? So 54 and 26 had to swap positions, but it's like worse than that. OK, so now we have a list of length 2, which is sorted. And now we have to take 93 and insert it into the list 2654. And it gets, doesn't move because it's already in the right position. Now we have to look at 17. And we want to insert 17 into the ordered list of length 3. So 17 well, has to go to the front. Right? 31 gets put in. 44 gets put in. 55 gets put in. 93 gets put in. And then 20 gets put in. OK, so we're going to implement this. It's a little bit more, well, it's not really more sophisticated. It's, just, it's a little bit, we have to be more careful when we're implementing this one. So we need to do two things here. Uh, we need to run the list, scan the list, making this insertion. All right, so maybe we should write a function which allows us to insert something. OK, so we need to write a function. We need to write a function, insert which takes the list 
and takes a position. Do I need to take two positions? All right, this is why I wrote all of these things last night, so I could cheat. I do need to take two positions. OK. Uh, performs in place insertion of xk at position xj for k strictly bigger than j. Everyone understand that statement? I'm saying I found something uh, at the kth position in the list, which has to be inserted at the jth position of the list, right? So we're going to have to swap two elements, but then like all the list elements have to shift down by one, right? So that's what this insertion is going to do. Okay, so given that we're going to have to make swaps, should we swap from the back of the list downwards or from the front of the list forwards? There is a right answer here. The answer isn't, it doesn't matter. Remember, I'm going to have to push, I'm going to have to push elements forward. So I'm going to have two options here. So we, option one is to push forward, which means that we're going to do something like xk plus 1 uh, gets xk. And this is going to be in some type of loop, 4k in range, length of the list. What's going to happen if I run this loop? Okay, K, okay, yes, thank you. Okay, 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 so suppose I don't ever walk off the end of the list. Let's just, okay, so what does X1 get set to? X1 gets set to X0, yeah. Does everyone, okay, so K gets zero, then x of 1 gets set to x of 0. Then k gets 1, and then x of 2 gets set to x of 1, which is x of 0. Then x of 3 gets set to x of 2, which is x of 1, which is x of 0. I'm setting every element in the list to x of 0 in this loop. Everyone see that? I'll, I'll say it again. If k is 0, x's of 1 get set to x's of 0, right? Then k gets 1, then x's of 2 gets set to x's of 1, which we've just set to x's of 0. Then k gets set to 2, which says x of 3 is equal to x of 2, which was just set to x of 0. Right? So I can't push a list forward, right? because as soon as I push the first, first thing forward, then the next thing just uses that to push forward. Right? So I, I actually have to move backwards down the list. So I have to say something like, go from the length of x's, to 0 by minus 1 uh, and do this instead. Okay. The last thing in the list gets the thing ahead of it. Then the second last thing in the list gets the thing ahead of it. Right? So now, the, now all of the information is moving forward. Except I've lost, I've overwritten one piece of information. What have I lost? The thing we're inserting, x of k, right? So I'm just going to remember that, right? Because everything's going to be pushed up once into x into the position where x of k used to be, right? Maybe I have to go back to the picture. Oh, that's not a very useful picture. Okay, well maybe after we write this insertion, we can uh, do some prints. Okay, so we have to be very careful now of how this is going to work. So I want at the kth position. Okay, so I've already screwed up a lot. So this should be an I, this should be an I, this should be an I. And I don't want to start at the length of the list, I want to start at K. Okay, so the thing at the Kth position, everything has to move up from the Ith position. Right, so I need to shift I through K up. So I don't go to, okay, so I go from K, I have to stop at J, I have to go by minus 1. And it's not going to include j, but that's okay because we're decreasing. So this is going to say what? x's of k is equal to x's of k minus 1. And then the last thing it's going to run is x's of j plus 1 is equal to x's of j. Great. And then 
x's of j should get x's of k. xk. Is this correct? Let me just cheat. That looks right to me. OK. Um, we're going to print what is happening here. And I'll write some doc tests. Oh, let's write a doc test. X this is empty. Insert. Oh, shoot. That's an edge case. So I guess we don't know how to insert. In well, OK. If x, if not x is return x is. Right? There, now we can start on an empty list. Uh, insert x is 2, 3, empty. Okay, now that's a bad that's a bad case. Okay, so okay. Three three one six two. Actually the front of the list has to be sorted. One, three, five, uh, six, minus three, minus two. Let's put a minus one here. Okay. So this is sorted. One, zero, one, two, three. So now I want to insert four. So insert in x's position at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Where do I have to insert this? I have to insert this at 0. OK, maybe I'll just change this to a minus 5 so I can insert it at 1. So after I run this, the list should look like this. Minus 5, uh, minus 3, 3, 5, 6, minus 2. Right, so I've inserted minus 3 at the first position, and then everything else had to like move down by 1. OK, so let's try and see what happens if we run it with this. Insert, what did I say? x is 4, 1, x is 4, 1. OK, so this should do some printing for us. If I remember how to type. What was this called? Monday. OK, so here is the sorted list. Was that the list I gave it? What happened to my 6? Oh, OK, so I screwed up. <laughs> Minus 5, 3, 3, 4. OK, so let's do some debugging here, because my 6 has disappeared. Uh, ba, 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 ba. I'm sure it has something to do with this range. I'm not giving you your money's worth today. Kj minus 1. Can anyone see my mistake? Uh, no, I'm printing out these lists as I'm as I'm walking through them. So the first iteration did. Oh, hold on, I haven't actually printed the answer. Okay, I'm not really giving myself uh, a good chance yet. No, I'm still missing my six. Oh no, sorry, I can't print this insert. I have to print the x. Geez, working in place is uh, confusing. Oh, that's still wrong. <laughs> but I have found the six, right? <laughs> so maybe I counted wrong. Zero, one, two, three, four. The fourth position. Oh, no, not the fourth position. What was the? Am I missing? I'm missing a minus three. I took the sorted list by accident. I need to take this list. OK, so here I have the one, two, three, four members are sorted. And I want to move this fourth member into the first position. OK, let's see if that will work. Minus five, three, five. Did that work? Yes. OK. So let's look at what was happening here. So I'm going to just print, 
printing a lot. Oops, that's the bubble sort. Let's print in here. Okay, so here's the list incoming list. Actually, let me let me just fix that. Let's just pick a nicer color for highlighting. Okay, so we have this list. Oh, it's not very better. <laughs> I'll fix it later. Okay, so um, here's the original list. And you can see things are starting to bubble up. So the six moved into here, right? So that six went here. And then the five moved up. Right? And then the three moved up. And then this three moved up. And then this minus five stayed put. And then we put in our minus three. Okay, so we can insert into a list. I'm going to take out these prints. So now what do we have to do? We have to use this insert to sort the list. So definition, insertion, sort, list of ints. Let us say that this returns nothing because we're going to do in place sorting. In place sorts in ascending order using insertion, insertion technique. Let me just say this is also in place. Okay, so what do we have to do? We have to assume, okay, so 4K in range length of X's, we're going to assume uh, X's at K uh, is sorted. Okay, so if X's of K is sorted, then I have to insert in x's x is the kth position into where I haven't found out where I'm supposed to insert it yet okay so I assume xk is sorted and then I have to say 4j in range k Right, so the, the beginning of the list is sorted, and now I have to figure out where to insert it. So it gets inserted as soon as it finds a member which is larger than it. Right, then if it's larger than it, then everything has to shift down to accommodate it. Okay, so if x is at, j, at k, that's the thing that's going to be inserted. If this is smaller than x is at j, then I need to insert in the list the kth element at j. And then that should run its course and return none. So, okay, let's see if it works. Insertion sort. Uh, insertion sort takes one positional argument, but three were given. Hmm? Oh. Why do I keep hitting that button? Is that correct? Yeah. All right, let's try a few more. That's oh right. I need to do a random list. Um okay, so just let me do a few more checks here. Random checks. Seems to be working to me. Okay, let's do some of our uh, testing now. Time it. Lambda. Testing. And what did I say? A length of a thousand. Let's do this once. Okay, about the same. This is time for bubble. for insertion. So it's at 0.17. Well, I hope you guys are ready to wait for around 20 seconds. 
because that's how I predict how long this will take. Yes. You are correct. So I thought those timings were spot on. Um, insertion sort. Okay. So I have to try that again. Let's let's go let's go down one. Oh. Okay. 0.23. That's not okay. Well, let's see what the effect effects are when we increase. Jeez, we may be waiting around for a while. Okay, so while that's running, I'm just going to uh, move ahead in the slides here. So here's a question that I want you to think about for Wednesday. Um, so again, like timing is not very mathematical in the very least, right? I want to be able to give a definitive measurement of the efficiency or runtime complexity of an algorithm, right? Timing's a good start, but again, if we like run it on different computers, we're going to get different timings. Even running on the same computer multiple times will give you different timings. So I want you to think about what operations like comprised our algorithms. We did comparisons, swapping, additions. Like, what operation could we count in each of our sorting algorithms so that knowing the absolute count of something is going to tell us which of these algorithms is definitively better than the other in certain situations. So rather than counting seconds it takes to sort the list, I want, I want you to think about what operation could be counted rather than timing. And then we're going to talk about algorithm complexity on Wednesday. So let's see what our timings have said. 25 seconds. So it seems that this Seems that insertion, in this, at least in the manner in which I implemented it, is a little bit slower than the bubble sort, which is surprising. Because their algor algorithmic complexity is equivalent. How much time do I have? Six minutes? Okay, I'm just going to take six minutes to read through your assignment, if that's okay. Uh, where did I put it? Okay, so there's a problem with this assignment. Okay, I drafted the solutions. So that means if you come and ask me for help and I give you help, you are definitely going to get flagged for cheating, right? Because your, your solutions are going to match the solution that I wrote to the assignment, right? So I'm going to have to maybe be a little bit dickish and like refuse, refuse to help you guys. But uh, we'll see what happens. Because again, I don't want to get in trouble. Uh, I don't care about you guys. I don't want to get in trouble. Where did I put this stuff? It's in here, I believe. In here, assignment three. Okay. Here it is. That's not it yet. I have to update. Assignment three. Yeah, I think I don't want to go over assignment two. I think all of you guys are like sick and tired of sinks and local sinks and max sinks. Okay, shh. Give me five minutes, four minutes. Okay, so we have implemented a fake social network called Chirper where people will chirp at one another. Uh, they'll chirp with hashtags that begin with percent signs ra rather than hashes. Okay, so I've created a database of chirps and profiles. Okay, so... Um, <laughs> are you just someone call it... <laughs> Because I felt like it. <laughs> Just wait. <laughs> okay. <laughs> These are tweets by Disney princesses, and I made Elsa a bitch. <laughs> I don't. I did. Um. Jeez, I think I'm out of time. Why don't you guys just go? We'll discuss it um, on Wednesday. Yeah.